So a bit of um, backstory about this. Uh, the internet went out in my Airbnb yesterday when I was trying to research this talk. So the gods clearly doesn't want me to give it. Um, so hi, I'm Daniel. I work um, for Datadog out of London. I am the only London employee, which is weird to me, but hey. And um, I work on metrics, which has nothing to do with UCF8, which is how I prefer it, because all of this is terrible. Um, <laughs> um, the problem that UTF-8 is meant to solve is the problem of representing text. So how we usually represent text is that we have a string of characters. And there are multiple ways to solve the problem of representing text. One of them is just use ASCII. This worked for a long time. We, you have seven bits, you have 128 characters. It's very compact, it works great if you're English or American or speak any sort of language that can sort of be fixed into ASCII looking things. Um, the other thing is that computers used this for a long time and people ended up working around it. One of the things that uh, happened was that people started figuring out transliterations for ASCII into their native language. So for example, Arabic uh, chat speak is a way to represent the Arabic script system into ASCII characters. The other solution that people came up with is, well, ASCII is only seven bits, but we have eight bits in our computer, so we can spend the 128 bits that we have extra for some other characters that we might want. So the problem there is no one could agree how to spend these 128 characters. Uh, some use them for Cyrillic characters because they're native Russian speakers and they want Cyrillic characters. Some use them for vari variations of ASCII because that is in their language. And the problem starts here because when you have two diff like the same representation saying two different things, you need to convey metadata about the text that you just sent someone, which means that you end up with, oh, um, that you end up with having to say, hey, I'm Italian, use this code page. Oh, I'm Russian, use this code page. And if you're doing like translation work, that's really tedious. And everyone started making up their own representation. There are a ton of solutions to this project of representing text in a computer. Um, so for example, this is a, one example I pulled off the internet of when this goes wrong. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher you your name. Uh, Timothy, um, you have an accent E, which is represented as two bytes in uh, UTF-8, but if you're using a Windows system, that's what you get. Um, so obviously we need a solution to this problem of multiple script systems into like in one go. So what we came up with was that we're going to do Unicode uh, 88, uh, invented in 1988. And uh, what that basically says is that, okay, we take all of the world's various characters, scripts, control characters, whatever, and we map them onto a number, and uh, hence called a code point. It turns out there are a ton of um, characters in the world, uh, 128, uh, 19 characters by the last count. Um, and it also includes other things like new lines, formatting characters, Unicode snowmans, because obviously you need Unicode snowmans. Um, there's a slight, so the way they thought they were gonna fix this was say, okay, so we need some characters, we'll just make it 16 bits. We'll have every single character conveyed in 16 bits. It's great. We get rid of all these various encodings and we, if you want to get the third character, you just index free into your 16-bit array, like in memory. Um, keep in mind, those 
that number is larger than the maximum number that you can fit in 16 bytes. So how does that work? So what they came up with was that they took various character sets that looked similar and combined them into the same code points, which is an ugly solution, but hey, they thought that might work, so great. Um, and the resulting character representation is called UCS2, which is universal coded characters, um, universally, universal character set uh, system two, which is two bytes for every single character. Um, they have some nice words in the original paper about how this is completely obvious and you should always do this. How could this go wrong? The modern length of a computer word is 32 bits and the ultimate length of a character code is 16 bits. All we have to do is recognize what's already true. <laughs> And this is from an earlier part of the paper. The idea of expanding the basis for character encoding from 8 to 16 bits is so sensible, indeed so obvious, that the mind immediately initially recalls from it. There must be a catch to it, otherwise we didn't think, why didn't we think of this so long ago? So here are the reasons why we didn't think of this long ago. Um, UCS2 broke a ton of things. Uh, computers work on bytes, UCS is 16 bits, so if you lose a byte somewhere in your stream of code points, you can never get the original stream back, you're screwed. Um, computers also, because they use different word formats, had to say that if I'm sending bytes, I am little endian or big endian, which means that you get this character that has different representations bit depending on whether you're little endian or big endian that you're supposed to put in the beginning of all your UTFs, uh, all your UCS2 text, and that is kind of a bother. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that uh, you can have zero bytes inside your character stream which if you ever work with C, which likes to, where a string is just a series of, series of bytes followed by a zero, then it will see that, think, oh, this is the end of the text, I could just truncate this. So it's bad for that. And there were a bunch of file system code that was working on bytes that looked for slash and because slash can occur in UCS2, it broke a ton of things. So there was a bunch of people like, like you, Unicode was getting to be a standard despite all of these issues. People were thinking this is terrible. We need like a compatibility format. And there was some shopping around the, um, the winner of all of this ended up being UTF-8, which is a wondrous, um, wondrous uh, character encoding. I mean, most of this talk is about Unicode, which is a system I dislike. UTF-8 is the system I love. Um, so what is UTF-8? Well, it's a variable with uh, character encoding, and what you do is that you have a, oh, this got messed up in the transfer, that's great. Um, <laughs> Um, you have a leading bit followed by continuation bits, uh, bytes, sorry. Um, if you have characters in the original ASCII range, then the representation is the ASCII code point immediately, which is great because if you have ASCII text, you just plug it into your UTF-8 um, uh, decoder and it just works. If you have characters that are outside the UTF-8 um, range, then you have a byte at the front that conveys how long the following um, number of bytes is. And it changes based, like, and every single one of the continuation bytes has zero, uh, one zero in the beginning. So this gives you a couple of good properties, like if you start passing UTF-8 in the middle of something, you can immediately figure out where the next character is. That's not the case with, uh, with UCS, um, UTS-2. Um, 
valid ASCII is valid UTF, I already mentioned that. Code points only appear as themselves, which is great. Uh, you're supposed to, in UTF-8, uh, detect whether someone is trying to encode something larger than it meant to be, but because they only encode as themselves, file systems work just as fine because they're going to search for the slash. Terminals work fine because if the escape character is there, it can only be an actual escape character. Regular expressions work somewhat and not entirely workable, but if you're just doing string search, they work. And another thing is that you can set um, awk, for example, that we just uh, heard about. That you can set the field separator to a UTF-8 byte stream, and because the only way that the UTF-8 sequence can exist is by the representation, then everything that's 8-bit clean just works. Another small thing is that because the, the header bytes increase in size according to the number of bytes following, if you just sort by bytes, it works, which is great. It's a great hack. So you have variable width encoding now. That means that you can't index into the fifth character or whatever, but turns out Unicode messed it up so we don't have to care about it. Um, they added combining characters which are an original character and another character that doesn't get super, superposed onto each other, which means that you don't know how many characters are before the one that you're indexing into. Um, turns out 16 bits wasn't enough because they had to make a new format, which is UTF-16, which introduced surrogate pairs, which is just two code points that you just mash together, and then you get a 21-bit number, um, which also means that you can't index directly into characters, which is great for UTF-8, because we don't have to care about the things that they work so hard to get in UTF-2 or UTF-16. Um, so, we have UTF-8, but there are still things that UTF-16 sabotages. Um, because surrogate pairs are just code points, UTF-8 can use them. So, they are restricted. So, if you're making a UTF-8 encoder, then you can see these surrogate pairs. And some databases like to encode the surrogate pairs as is, and some like to encode it as not, which means that you have to be a bit careful about that. Um, some, even though UTF-8 is byte-oriented like and you don't have to say about your ending notice, some programs still try to do this to indicate that it's UTF-8. So you will see that BOM character, that uh, FEFF character, in front of a ton of Windows edited files. Um, UTF-16 is limited to 21 bits, which means that we can't extend UTF-8 because a ton of things still use um, UTF-16. Um, and another problem about UTF-8 is that it still represents Unicode. Uh, Unicode, in its original conception, ordered the lowest code points by GDP. So if you're a Latin country and you have a high GDP, that means that you get smaller numbers out. But if you have low GDP, that means that you get higher numbers because we don't represent them that often, which is kind of a dick move. <laughs> um, this means that there is a ton of, yeah. So if you're Japanese, like if you're using katakana, you have to use more space than if you are just representing Latin variants. Uh, this means that there are a ton of people still using their old character encodings, even though it's supported by UTF-8 and Unicode. 1% uh, of the internet is still in the Shift JIS format, um, which it's kind of amazing. 1% of the entire internet is this weird Japanese encoding that is kind of arcane. Uh, the other thing that ended up going was a lot of people relied on the fact that ASCII is 7 bits. And they never bothered to extend it. Um, 
you see this variance encoding of Unicode all over the place. There's Punicode, which defines a state machine that compacts really easily if you're staying within the same character limits, which is really ugly. There's quoted printable, which is just put equal signs everywhere in your text and hope it escapes correctly. And then HTTP doesn't support um, Unicode. It only supports um, in the headers uh, the Windows Latin one format. So we're still keeping all of this crap around. Um, so the lessons you can get from the whole saga of UTF-8 or UTF and, and Unicode is that if you choose your backwards compatibility carefully, you can end up with better adoption. Unicode was destined to be only used for printers when it originally started out. And because people chose their backwards compatibility carefully, that meant that they could get adoption and actually use this. Uh, the other thing is that text is not just a race of characters. Um, any sort of substring indexing into an array of text is really difficult to pull off. And there are multiple issues with truncating things and whatever. So, don't even think about that. Just like a string is just a byte blob that we happen to put a text representation on. And the other thing is duplication is not the worst form of abstraction. I mean, so way back, we, um, we cut down the number of characters in order to fit into this, like, we cut down on the number of like characters to 100%, so that you fit into 16 bits. If they just duplicated them all and eaten the fact that it had to be variable width, we would have less issues doing Chinese to Japanese translation and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, that's it for me. Thank you.